Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The next trial is for Lunacy. Because today we're going to take a break from the lunacy of looking at Harbor Homebrew and change things up a bit. Because, as I'm sure you know, reading bad homebrew all the time takes a toll on the old mental health. So let's take it easy and look at official content. But, seeing as how I'm a creature of habit, we're going to have to do bad official content. Ooh, ooh, I got it. Let's call it Odiferous Official Content. Specifically, feats. More specifically, really crappy feats. Before we get started though, a quick overview on why this matters. When you take a feat, you're giving up an ability score increase, and as we all know, adding a few points to an important ability score can really improve your character. So feats to compete, they need to be great. And don't get me wrong, there are great feats like a great weapon master. I mean, it's got great right in the title, so you know it's a uh, great. FYI, none of today's feats deserve to have great in the title. Steam pop, dog do, maybe? but definitely not great. Also keep in mind, feats, like anything else in the game, can be very campaign dependent. So while at least some of these feats could be good depending on the setting, for the most part, they stink worse than Biff's closet. What? That's where I age my cheese. Let's start out with the best of the worst. In my opinion, that would be Keen Mind. It says, you have a mind that can track time, direction, and detail with uncanny precision. You gain the following benefits. Increase your intelligence score by 1 to a maximum of 20. Oh look, a half increase. That's actually not that bad. What else we got? You always know which way is north. Okay, that is actually extremely useful. Because the next time Santa gives me coal, I'm trudging up to the North Pole to give it right back to him. I mean sure, it would be simpler to have a cartography kit. Or do a survival check. But that could fail. And then you might have to do... Another one. I ain't got time for that. I have some coal that needs to be stuffed up some jolly old elves. Stocking. Yeah, that'll work. What else we got? You always know the number of hours left before the next sunrise or sunset. Okay, that doesn't seem useful at first, but I can think of... Yeah, I can think of at least one instance where that would be useful. But then again, how many adventurers actually have a curfew? You can accurately recall anything you have heard or seen within the past month. Wait, what? You don't have to take notes? Now that I'm a fan of, but I've basically got it covered already. I just play a really, really stupid character, which for some reason, I excel at. So after looking at this, could Keen Mind be useful? I could see it in certain cases, <coughs> Strawland. <coughs> but for the most part, it can be accomplished with note taking and a bit of nature knowledge or survival. I would not say this is worth wasting a feed on. Personally, I love Keen Mind. Or as I call it, the DM is now my bitch feet. Yo DM, how many hours until sunset? And I'll wait five minutes and I'll be like, Yo DM, how many hours now? I ask it all the time and I have never not once cared. Or we're in a dungeon and I'm like, Hey DM, which way is north? Then when he tells me, I'm like, oh, okay, very, very interesting. But it's not like we have a map, so who cares? <laughs> then I'll ask again a few moments later. Best of all is when an NPC brings up a name. Uh, excuse me, DM, since you're now my secretary, do I remember that jerk he's talking about? Oh, and while we're on the topic, get me some coffee. Six sugars, eight creams. Up next, from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we have Chef, or as I like to call it, Uninspiring Leader. You like that picture? That one's for you history buffs. You know, Inspiring Leader almost made this list, but then I saw Chef. And honestly, Inspiring Leader isn't bad. Is it game changing like you want a feat to be? No, but it's definitely not bad. Alright, let's see what we get with Chef. Time and effort spent mastering the culinary arts have paid off. You gain the following benefits. Increase your constitution or wisdom score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency with cooking utensils if you don't have it already. Oh, thank God. I cannot tell you how many times the party's lives have depended on a cooking check. Oh, wait. Yeah, I can. Let me think. Uh, six times Carry the one. And exactly zero times. As part of a short rest, you can cook special food, provided you have ingredients and cooks utensils on hand. 
You can prepare enough of this food for a number of creatures equal to four plus your proficiency bonus. At the end of the short rest, any creature who eats the food and spends one or more hit dice to regain hit points regains an extra 1d8 hit points. So food that gives you extra HP on a short rest? Huh. I wonder what the special ingredient is. Maybe love? Nah, I'm betting it's fentanyl. With one hour of work, when you finish a long rest, you cook a number of treats equal to your proficiency bonus. These special treats last eight hours after being made. A creature can use a bonus action to eat one of these treats to gain temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. Your proficiency bonus? I can't even pretend that's good! My sarcasm doesn't go that high! Inspiring Leader gives you up to 25 temporary HP at level 20. But hey, Chef's total of 6 temp HP isn't that far behind, right? <laughs> behind is a very aptly chose word, because I'm pretty sure this feat came directly out of someone's behind. There's only one case where this feat would be acceptable. If you're an Eberron, playing a halfling bard named Merla, who once cracked a safe with a set of cooking utensils, I would accept this feat. Although Merla didn't even need it. And if that piques your interest, check out my Eberron adventure videos. My favorite one is about the guy who did the dirty with the giant bee. Our next feat is lightly armored. It says, you have trained to master the use of light armor, gaining the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. Oh look, another half increase. Is anyone else starting to sense a pattern here? You gain proficiency with light armor. Wow! Light armor! That's a whole plus 2 to your armor class if you use studded leather. Totally worth a feat, right? Who would even need this? Wizards and sorcerers get mage armor, which would be plus 3. Though it does cost a spell slot. Monks? They get unarmored defense. So as long as their wisdom mod is at least two, this isn't really worth it for them either. Everyone else gets light armor. Well, I am sure the next part will be better. It has to be. What else we got? Really? That's it? This must be the worst feat, so you know what? I guess we're done here. And uh, much earlier than normal. Thank you so much for watching, and as always... What? Two more? How is that even possible? Oh, I can't wait to see what we got next. Let me tell you a story of a young, fresh-faced Biff in one of his first campaigns. I was playing a wizard, because, you know, I wanted to know what it felt like to be a giant nerd and not the super awesome popular person who has a billion friends that I normally am. And my DM said, hey, Biff, I'm going to give you a free feat. I was over the moon, which you know for a werewolf is really something. I love free stuff. Hell. I had a colonoscopy the other day just because it was free. I asked for Lucky, because, you know, that's the feed that really feels like cheating, and I love cheating. But the DM said no. You get... Lightly armored. After looking it up, I told the DM, Yo, newbie, if you're going to f*** me over like that, I'd appreciate a good dinner first. Maybe some wine, like dancing. I cha-cha a mean slide. You know, make me feel like a special guy before f***ing me. He did not appreciate my candor, but I must say in retrospect, it was a magical evening. That never happened, but it does actually sound kind of magical. No, sorry. Up next we have a uh, Weapon Master. Wait, just Weapon Master? I didn't even know that was a thing. What does it say? You have practiced extensively with a variety of weapons, gaining the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. Anyone else starting to think these half increased are just wizards poor attempt to put lipstick on a pig? Or deodorant on a werewolf? You gain proficiency with four weapons of your choice. Each one must be a simple or martial weapon. Wow! Four whole weapons? That's so... crappy. Uh, if you want weapons, just maybe take a level of fighter. You get all the martial and simple weapons, along with armor and second wind. And even shields. And best of all, no one will laugh at you for taking such a stupid feat. I've heard some countries use this feat as an IQ test. If you take it, they lock you in an insane asylum. Well, they don't really lock you because you're dumb enough you wouldn't have to be locked in. They could just like leave the door open you would never figure it out. But you get what I'm saying. After all this, you just have to be asking yourself, how could anything be worse? Well, till now, we've had maybe situationally useful to possibly a little useful to pretty much useless but we have not had a feat that actually hurts you 
So my pick for worst feat in Dungeons and Dragons really scratches that itch. May I present to you, Grappler. It says, you've developed the skills necessary to hold your own in close quarters grappling. You gain the following benefits. You have advantage on attack rolls against a creature you are grappling. You're probably thinking, newbie, that's actually not that bad. Well, you know how drug dealers reel you in by giving you the first hit for free? That's what this feat does. It gives you something pretty good, then, well, you'll see. And you know what? I would argue it's not even that good to begin with. All you need to do after grappling is knock your opponent prone, and everyone gets advantage. Plus, the creature can't get up because grapple creatures have a movement speed of zero. So if you're strong enough to grapple an enemy, you're probably strong enough to prone them. The next thing you get is you can use your action to try and pin a creature grappled by you. To do so, make another grapple check. If you succeed, you and that creature are both restrained until the grapple ends? You heard that right. You restrain yourself. Thank God. Because, you know, feats that hurt your own character, that niche was really empty until now. So those were my personal top five worst feats. What about you? Which feats do you love to hate? Let me know in the comment. Likes, subs, and if you're feeling so inclined, shares are very much appreciated. Though be careful, every time I share my content, people get mad. You would think the preacher would appreciate me giving him that break in the middle of service, but no. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, play your character. Don't let your character play you.